Blessings, everyone. We are so happy that you decided to join us here on Facebook Live. Please like, share, and comment. For ministry giving, there are three ways you can do that. Through Facebook, for PayPal, for Cash App, or send it to the mailing address listed below. If you have a prayer request, you can send it to exactingtruthinfo at gmail.com. We know that the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. Also, you can join us on social media. We're on Instagram and YouTube. You can find plenty of sermons and short, shareable messages to send out to your family and loved ones. We are getting ready for the word. Please like, share, and comment. Be blessed.
Good evening. Blessed Wednesday evening to each and every one of you. Of course, the exact and truth body fellowship of believers, members that are yoked with us in ministry and that precious exact and truth landscape of body fellowship believers across that footy plane, that fellowship with us irrespective of where your membership lies. Welcome to our exacting insight into the word Wednesday Bible study Facebook live. We're back beloved. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day that your mighty hand has made. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for food, shelter, and clothing. We thank you for protections and provisions with regards to our families, our loved ones, relatives, our children, our friends, neighbors, co-workers, and even our enemies. We're asking that you come into this study this evening. We're asking that you bless everyone that's present, those that will peruse this sermon at a later date, we're asking that you just administer grace to every hearer and allow us to leave the better for coming no longer the same. We're asking that you order our steps today, asking that you give us strength and power that we might stand against the pitfalls and the snares and the wiles of how Satan planted in our way in order and designed to hamper our progression. We're asking that you remember the truly poor today, the sick and shut in, those who may be experiencing loss. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And we're asking that you sup and dine with those that may be bereaved today. We're asking that you strengthen the bodies and the minds of those who may be infirm today. And we're asking right now that uh, you have your way. We're asking that you remember the truly poor. Once again, we're asking that you remember this world that we're in. It's war-torn in many regards. We're asking that you intervene in that conflict that is in Eastern Europe between Russia and the Ukraine. But we pray that your will be done. We know that certain, certain, in certain areas, there exist circumstances where in which we are watching literally before our eyes prophecy, biblical prophecy that was left on record for our learning come to pass right before our eyes. We're asking that you give us the ability and the wisdom and sagacity, and sagacity to prepare so that we are not called unawares. We have the advantage as believers as prophecy, so we're praying that you give us the strength and the wherewithal to act as such. And we're asking once again that you have your way. We say at Exactly Truth Ministries that you remember those that need remembering everywhere, those who are decompressing from the faith possibly, those who are fearful, skeptical, unbelieving, discouraged because of man's dogma, sacrilege, and hypocrisy, and this aberrant walk with regards to the orthodoxy of your scripture, and what has been laid before us, we ask that you give us strength. Oftentimes when we run into conflict with our neighbors and with our fellow man, and uh, when we are angered because of the things that people who claim that they're believers, but act uh, not in accordance to those who should be carrying the gospel and carrying light, help us not to blame you in heaven for what men do down here. And we ask these blessings and many more in that great name that is above all names we pray, Yeshua, Yehoshua HaMashiach, the Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, we're back. We're back from many travels, and we're grateful for those of you all who are joining us here on this evening. Blessings to you. Good to be here. Uh, we don't take it for granted. We appreciate you all's faithfulness. You could be studying fellowshipping anywhere, and irrespective of how large the crowd is, how small the crowd is, we're grateful for you being here. We're grateful for being back. We're grateful for the traveling protections that the Most High has allotted to myself and my family and the uh, ongoing celebration of my precious wife, Lady Joy, and her momentous year. And truly, we're grateful for those precious Davises, Minister Mark, our Minister Music, and uh, wonderful Secretary Kimberly, his wife, our Executive Secretary of Exact and Truth Ministries that have that wonderful couples ministry and allowing the Most High to use them to be an encouragement to the body of the Christ. Thank you, Davises, for your faithfulness, uh, your loyalty, your friendship, and your uh, just uh, demeanor and obedience with regards to the Father. Uh, we salute the landscape and uh, forgive us for Saturday not being able to convene with you. Literally every circumstance that seemingly could arise to 
run interference and prohibit us from being and meeting with you all on time. It took place, but we are overcomers through him that loves us. And we're here this evening and we're grateful. No, we're not going to spend the hour talking about the slap heard around the world. We, we do have something that we will preface that is an important example out of the text for this evening. But I guess if somebody want to talk about the spiritual ramifications of old brother Will and brother Chris, you're going to have to join us. Yes, what an excellent segue. And bring your question on next week, April the 6th at 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. We're going to be live and in person at the Swateria Church of God in our exacting insight into the word Bible study and question and answer. Yes, next week, April the 6th and the following week, April the 13th. Some of y'all been complaining. When we going to get together, everybody else is getting together. We need to get together before they have another shutdown where we're getting together. And we're going to be in person. Bring your questions. We're going to study. We have a wonderful time with the Most High when we do so. Usually it is relegated to those that show up live. You know, but we're going to stream it this time because not for those of y'all who don't feel like moving out of your living room here in Central Pennsylvania. You get in that car and you come and fellowship with us live. But there are people in the landscape across the country that don't want to miss out. And so, yes, April the 6th and the 13th, 7 p.m. at the Swateria Church of God. The information is on the Facebook page. The information undoubtedly has been in announcements and uh, Lady Joy will probably insert into the comments. We want to see you there. All right, let's prepare the study for this evening. We have a word. Some of y'all was like, well, you know, Shepherd Man says if he don't have a word, he ain't going to show up. Maybe that's what happened on Saturday. No, we weren't in town and weren't back yet to be in the Exacting Truth Studios to come before you. But we've got a word this evening. And we're going to pour it out on you as the Most High poured into us. We're just a vessel designed to be poured into and to empty so that we can be poured into again. If you think you're more important than that, then you need to examine the vessels in your very own kitchen or wherever you have them in your domicile. I don't think you want a common jar that holds water to tell you uh, how fast to drive or what to wear to work. So the Most High doesn't want his vessels two cent either. Some of us have an elevated uh, an, an e elevated outlook of, of who we are personally, and we need to humble. Why? Not because shepherd man says so, but because the Christ said in, I believe, Matthew 5 and 5, that the meek shall inherit the earth, not the halty. All right. So if you would please grab your holy writ, your Bible, whether it be paper or whether it be a device, and join us in the Hebrew book of Isaiah. Chapter 26, we're going to be reading verses 1 through 4. And if you have the capability, please join us in the New International Version, English translation of the Scriptures, the Hebrew Scriptures, Isaiah 26, verses 1 through 4, NIV. Herein is the reading of the Holy Writ, beloved, and it reads as thus, In that day, this song will be sung, in the land of Judah, we have a strong city. God, the most high God of the Hebrews, that is, makes salvation its walls and ramparts. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter. The nation that keeps faith, you will keep in perfect peace, the most high that is, those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. I believe that the King James Version says he will keep you in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on him. And finally, verse four, trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself is the rock eternal. May the Most High add a blessing to the reading of the Holy Writ. Beloved, the title of our text this evening is simply titled happiness versus peace the term happiness is defined in the english lexicon as the quality or state of being happy when we say quality or state as it is defined here we're speaking of 
a condition, an emotional status, as it were. It's also defined as good fortune. It's also defined as contentment or joy. Now, most people describe and or define the parameters of hope for their current and their future lives in terms of whether or not they're happy. And who hasn't heard someone exclaim, listen, I just want to be happy. I know I've said it. Or say to someone else, look, I'm just looking for you to be happy. I just want you to be happy. Now, don't take me wrong. Today's message, beloved, is not an effort to demonize the desire to be or the pursuit of happiness. I want you to be happy. I have uh, similar feelings in my heart as John had in his third letter. He said, I would that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I concur with that notion. I desire for you all to be and reach the apex of your happiness. However, it is important to note that not only is happiness not everything, but it also may not be the paramount or first priority that most folks believe that it should be. Huh, shepherd man? Listen, y'all going to want to hang in, hang in there for this because we're going somewhere with this. Beloved, ask yourselves this question this evening. Why do most people passionately desire and some feverishly pursue financial wealth? Now, if we're being transparent, if we're being completely honest, it's often because far too many people believe that the achievement of happiness is largely realized via the acquisition of tangible wealth. Generally, when folks think in terms of what and who is happy, most of us don't model in our thinking or conceptualize in our imaginations folks living in poverty or generally in squalor. We don't generally think about folks struggling day to day to make ends meet as happy. Tell me I'm lying. And if we're personally struggling with stuff ourselves and folks all around us are experiencing similar problems, issues, and circumstances as we are, then that quite possibly could be a large portion of the problem to begin with, beloved. How so, shepherd man? It's funny that you ask. Because then many, if not most of us, find ourselves subsequently turning to the media for inspiration and to define what happiness looks like and what it means to truly be happy. If you don't feel as though you're happy and that your circumstances produce and help to form happiness in your cipher or your surrounding, then where are we going to look for an example and to set the stage for what we perceive as happiness? Unfortunately, far too many of us, we turn to the media. We turn to folks and you got to be careful when you're gaining your sustenance. And even when you are placing your hope in someone that is always trying to sell you something, Lord have mercy. That's a word within itself, but I digress. And yes, when we turn to that media, are they not literally always trying to sell us something or something is for sale? I'm just saying. So we look at people in our leisure time after that hard day of work, after sacrifice, after working oftentimes that job that allows you to take care of yourself but doesn't bring you splendor. After that, we let our hair down. Some of y'all take your hair off. But I digress. Keep moving, Shepard. 
Yes, and in our leisure time, after a long day of work, or after battling and struggling all day, we observe folks in the media who seem to have it all. A bunch of money or a bunch of worldly possessions, oftentimes perusing programming that display and highlight and profile people traveling to or living in places that we ourselves do not have access to or we don't possess the resources currently to visit ourselves. So we take pleasure in perusing and watching those who can. We watch or read about business leaders and politicians that appear to possess the power, connections, and access to make the moves that we wish we could make in our lives, to make our lives simpler or to bring provision to our life that would make us happier. And we then imagine that these people with all of their wealth, all of their power and access and all of their stuff, well, they must be happy with all of the stuff that they have procured and obtained, right? After all, they don't live where we live or have as little money or resources as we do. They've got far more than what we have. So they must be happy, right? Many of us think to ourselves, I certainly, myself, certainly would be happy if I could afford that house or if I could drive that car or if I lived in that neighborhood or if I could travel to that country or if I could wear those clothes or that piece of jewelry. It goes on and on. Or if those types of folks even were my friends where I had access to them and the doors that they could open. If they were family or friends, man, my whole life would be different. I can imagine that I would be happy. And you know what? You very well may be correct regarding yourself and your outlook. Listen, I'm not here to speak from every, for everyone. Some people getting stuff just flips their lid. Very well could make you happy if you had more, more things, more stuff. Were in the environment, in the surroundings of people who had more things and more stuff. I can't speak for everybody. I can only speak for Shepherd Man. More money, more resources, more access, more corporeal or natural carnal power and authority, and more possessions may just make some of you out there far more happier than you currently are. However, there is a vast difference between the simple emotional disposition of feeling happy and being completely at peace. For example, there is and there exists immense wealth on both sides of the borders between Russia and Ukraine. It's undeniable. In Russia, they call them oligarchs. There are dozens of billionaires and countless millionaires. What, you don't think before a war broke out that there were rich people in the Ukraine? There were rich people that emanate from the country of Ukraine that were abroad doing business or vacationing or living abroad? Yet and still, despite this immense wealth, these powerful people who can afford anything on this planet, Yet and still, no amount of money was able to stave off the war that has broken out between the two countries. And some of you all think getting more stuff will make you happy. Well, more stuff and people who had all of the material possessions in the world could not stop this invasion from happening. <sighs> there are countries in the West, the United States being one of them, Great Britain being another, where so many of these individuals have holdings and have great wealth, well, there are sanctions that have been placed on these wealthy people because wealthy people have access to power and people in powerful places, particularly in government, well, these wealthy people have their ear. Because after all, what power does is give powerful people access to the wealth 
of wealthy people. So you see how that works and how that's intertwined? Well, rather than jumping directly into the war and defending the Ukraine or joining and aiding Russia, whatever side they may fall on, well, what we can do is we can sanction the wealth of these wealthy people in hopes that their influence will turn the wrath and the provocation of the government leaders, particularly Putin and his minions, that have engaged in this horrible invasion and imposition regarding the Ukrainian people. Guess what? Folk ain't got access to their accounts if they're in cash or if they're in euros. Still, impacting the wealth of these wealthy people who are close to the power brokers in these nations has not stopped the ending and the disruption of peace. Now, isn't that something to think about? No amount of money has been able to stave off this invasion. Now, this prior example alone overwhelmingly proves the point that money isn't always capable of purchasing happiness or peace. Yet from a spiritual connotation, because we use civics, economics, and politics often here at Exact and Truth Ministries, not to tell you how to vote or what to think, but to make a spiritual point. And the spiritual point is, why are there so many divisions and denominations? in Christendom that solely pursuit, name it or claim it, or the acquisition of wealth. The Most High wants us wealthy. <laughs> well, I tell you what, if you were to obtain this material wealth, it's not going to cause you to be any closer to the Most High. Just like it has no bearing on this war that's going on right now. But I digress. Yeah, this is a powerful example alone that overwhelmingly proves the point that money isn't always capable of purchasing happiness and for that matter peace there are still very rich and powerful people on both sides of the borders but the question is are any of them happy because peace has largely and literally been removed from their lives and they have our prayers happiness can be very and a very volatile emotional state to engage in. Yeah, we want to be happy, but it's subject to all kinds of stuff, beloved. And it is susceptible to an endless list of mitigating factors, an endless degree of criteria, and inward as well as external circumstances, which can swing the pendulum of life from absolute joyfulness. I mean, you are happy, you're bubbling over, you're laughing, you're falling out of your chair and seemingly in an instant because of criteria. Too many criteria to name or count. You can go from that degree of absolute joyfulness to crippling sadness as easily as the wind blows a loose leaf down the street. Beloved, our adversary how Satan very well knows that most of mankind is placing all of their hope for this life in one single basket. And that single basket is a pursuit of happiness. And I don't know how wise that is. Is it really wise to place our desire to be happy over achieving peace? when happiness in this life is so vulnerable to any and all agitations and infractions, whereas peace is defined as a state of mutual harmony between people or groups, especially in personal relations, or during the absence of war. Y'all hear that? See, in order to achieve peace, it can't just be a selfish individual emotion Sometimes we happy and nobody else in the room is. And we're like, hey, it ain't my fault you ain't happy. I'm having a good day. But in order to achieve peace, you need communion among the groups that you're interacting with. You need to come to mutual harmonious agreement between people or groups. The definition also says that peace is absence of war. Now, that doesn't have to be Ukraine 
and Russia, that can be in your house. I better keep moving. The definition of peace also entails freedom from strife. So think about it. It's one thing to be free from strife and contention with those that you dwell around or with. I want to ask you a question. One of the reasons why you may not be at peace with others, and you may constantly be warned, because guess what? You ain't even at peace with yourself. Have you all removed the strife from your heart? Well, how are you going to be at peace with me? I digress. This evening, and I'm not going to be much longer before you, we're examining and comparing an often fragile emotional state or feeling, think about it, which is happiness, subject to every criteria. Listen, the other day I looked out the window and I was preparing to go take care of business and our neighbors had a moving truck that seemed like it was as long as the entire block. And it was everywhere on the block, but their house. It was blocking my driveway and my neighbor's driveway. And I was patient but my patient began to grow thin. How many people are patient? Listen, I've been counseling for over 30 years and hours on end. But let me tell y'all something. I need your prayers because the stuff that I'm impatient in, I have no patience for. And I need your prayers. And I, listen, I would have had, I would have believed, I believe, I have to believe that because I have the Holy Spirit, that I would have engaged the situation with much cooth and wisdom. But I was growing impatient with why would they block, especially when I saw, first I didn't know what was going on. Then when I saw that it was the neighbor on the other side of me and they were way, they were far away from their house and their drive. Maybe the person driving the truck didn't know the exact address. But it was not good neighborly decorum and graciously and gratefully, it resolved itself relatively quickly before a shepherd man had to go outside and the enemy wanted me to challenge my salvation. I, I feel y'all praying. Beloved, this evening, we're examining and comparing an often fragile emotional state or feeling to a true or factual condition of reality. What I'm saying is his peace isn't so soon shaken. The factual differences between peace as opposed to just being happy. Well, those factual differences are often overlooked. Happy, once again, is how a person feels. But when a person is at peace is what you actually are. Oh, that's a word. I'm going to say it again. Happy is what you feel, but when you're at peace, that's a state and a condition of reality that you are. you actually are. That is, when you achieve it. The stability of peace is not contingent upon the need. I feel the Holy Spirit, because we need to hear this today. I'm going to say it slow. The stability of peace, the acquisition of peace, when we have it, is not contingent upon the need for completely perfect external conditions. Because they stoned Deacon Stephen to death in Acts. But one of the frustrating things while they were stoning him was they apparently couldn't take the peace that was on his continence as his spirit left his body to be with the Most High. See, you can attack the surface, but the surface doesn't have the depth perception to be able to reach a person that's truly at peace. Oh, somebody need this this evening. So many of us trade away the ability to pursue peace simply because we want to be happy. But think about it. Your happiness is subject to everything that's going on in this world. Everything that's going on in your surroundings, everything that's going on in your circumstances, heck, everything that's going on in your body. You can be happy then a pain hits, mess up your whole day. I'm teaching to someone this evening, Holy Ghost and fire. The factual differences between the two yeah, they're often overlooked. The stability of peace, no, it's not completely contingent upon the need for conditions to be perfect. In fact, you can be in perilous conditions 
Think about the disciples when they were on the seas and the seas began to experience turmoil and unrest because of a storm. But Christ, because he was peace, while they were experiencing chaos and anxiety and, and were just covered and encompassed with fear, he was in the bottom of the boat asleep. See, you can be in a storm and that storm don't have access to what brings you peace. Lord have mercy. Paul the Apostle wrote in his letter, to the body ecclesia at Philippi, Philippians chapter four, verse seven. And we are referencing the New International Version of the English translation again. In that seventh verse of that fourth chapter, he wrote, and the peace of God, the most high God of the Hebrews, which transcends, that circumvents, KJV says passive, all understanding will guard, guard, your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's like a firewall against the circumstances that happiness otherwise is not protected from. My Lord, that's a word. Happiness with many individuals exists solely on the surface of their reality, which make, makes it subject to the external and existential attacks of their reality and seldom permeates to any degree of spiritual or intrinsic depth. That's the reason why somebody can say something terse or caustic to us and take us right out of our happiness. Well, maybe not those of y'all listening to Landscape this evening because it's been a long time since we've counted how many Holy Ghosts you have. Are we up to 10,088? Yeah, but for the rest of us, oftentimes all it takes is a slip or an on purpose of the tongue and you're off to the races. An excellent example of this, all y'all was waiting for it, is the slap seen and heard around the world at this year's Oscar ceremony. The actor that assaulted the comedian, name needs no addressing, is a, a worldwide phenomenon. The actor that assaulted the comedian on stage, the comedian himself, a worldwide phenomenon, was laughing with the comedian and at his jokes. But with one glance at his wife's disapproval of the joke at her expense, went from an emotional state of apparent happiness to anger and fury, which resulted in a senselessly violent act moments before his most crowning achievement. I can almost swear, and I don't know the individual personally, I've been in his camp before, but I'm telling you, I, if I was a betting man and I'm not, because I'm careful with the resources and the talents that the most high puts in our provision. But nevertheless, if I happen to be a gambling man, I would put money on that one. It ain't no way that you could convince me that when Will was passed up for the top honors, when he played Ali, or when he was passed up once again for the top honors, when he played that true story in pursuit of happiness, you would have never been able to get me or convince me or him for that matter, in my opinion, to say that when you finally reach your crowning achievement and the whole world is watching and so many different other people and people from your community achieving something that was unprecedented before in the history of our people. After all, only five people have ever won the top male actor's honor. In that very moment, if you showed him his future, you would not be able to convince him that he would lose his mind and they would not be talking about something that he and only four other black men ever achieved, more so than they would be talking about how he lost his temper in his full mind. Now, I know, and don't expect all of you all to agree. Some of y'all are like, I want a man that would defend me. I want, listen, can I remind you that there are a lot of those type of men that are in the grave? Because a lot of times our attitudes in public over words and something simpler get folks killed. But I digress. I digress. The sheer vulnerability of his fragile state of happiness actually displayed something deeper, beloved. It all but proved that the actor was void of any true peace on the inside. Or he wouldn't have been that vulnerable to such an outburst of an attack that would have put 
average individuals with that many eyes watching in jail or at least arrested at the moment. It all but proved that he was not only instantly made unhappy, but he really didn't have any peace on the inside. And that had nothing to do with Rock's joke. You might want to look closer at your neighbors because oftentimes that's where we find the source of the root of what's really making us unhappy. But I digress. Anybody ever married Jezebel? Oh, yeah, Ahab did. Somebody didn't like that. Which would have provided him with spiritual immunity against the constant barrage of attacks that take place when you have a celebrity in a position of celebrity at the apex that he has achieved with his family. Peace is something that acts as a firewall. But what happens if you're not at peace? You don't have that firewall. And eventually, somebody says one thing too many. And how many people know out there that very seldom do we lash out at the truly people who deserve it the most? But I digress again. Paul the Apostle highlights the power which resides in the complete peace of salvation when he says that this peace that passeth understanding in the seventh verse of chapter four to the body ecclesia at Philippi, well, it guards our hearts and mind through the Hamashiach. Are you guarded against these wiles? Or can you barely sleep at night because of your absence of true peace, which ultimately impacts how long you stay happy? When you're at peace, beloved, and I'm closing, your heart and mind are protected from the carnal and spiritual elements and entities that commonly attack and successfully impact our happiness. Yes, that means that it attacks your happiness on a surface level just because and happiness doesn't come because somebody's insulting or somebody is uh, trying to attack us uh, with veracity or with vitriol sometimes our happiness is taken from us or removed in a place of grief or in a time of sorrow but that doesn't mean that because you experience sorrow in your heart because of mitigating circumstances, that that is going to remove the peace that the Most High placed in your heart. We need a peace that is going to allow us to survive through war, that's going to allow us to survive through peacetime, that's going to allow us to survive through the loss of loved ones. We need a peace that passes understanding. You gotta, If you have a peace that passes understanding, then why would that not have the capability and the power to protect you from every device that ha Satan has? It's, it can't be understood. How does Satan have something in his bag of tricks that's going to defeat the peace that the master gives us? We need to stop looking for material wealth and we need to get a hold of that. What is that? A peace that can't be threatened by war. Well, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's that peace that the Hamashiach, the answer, the bringer of salvation and life, eternal. It's the peace that he embodied. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 18. He had to speak and minister to those that followed him. He said, no man taketh my life from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Do you all have power to navigate through your circumstances? And although it may impact how you respond and what your disposition is on an emotional level, it does not harm your heart because your heart is encrypted and protected through the peace that passive understanding. And if you don't feel like this is uh, scriptural, then I'm telling you, why did the scripture say that those that follow him and those that were empowered by his grace, what we bind on earth will be bound in heaven and what we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. He said, all power has been given to me in Matthew uh, chapter 28, I believe, verse 19, all power has been given to me in the heavens and the earth and lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. So what he's saying in the Gospel of John chapter 10 and 18, we've been deeded the same power and the same peace. I want to know, have you acquired it so that you can tap into it? Because it's more important than you just being happy tomorrow. Are you going to be at peace forever? Matthew chapter 26, verse 53. He had to speak to 
Simon Peter himself. When he sought to disrupt peace at a time of arrest because Christ had to fulfill his duty and what was prophesied on behalf of all of us, even to now. He lashed out because Cephas, Cephas was not at peace himself. So he drew a sword and similar, Lord, I didn't see this parallel until now. <laughs> he picked on the smallest servant of one of the Roman legionnaires, just like a six foot two, six foot three, 200 and some pound dude that played Muhammad and had to train for it, smacked the dude that was the equivalent of a little or a short person. Yeah, so Peter, he don't attack one of the Roman soldiers. He cuts off the ear of one, one of their armor bearers. And Christ had to rebuke him in the moment. He said in Matthew 26, 53, thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? In other words, Christ was like, fall back. I don't need your help. If I, I could intervene on my own behalf, but I'm at peace with the choice that I made. Because, you know, contrary to what you know, if you would have stayed awake in Gethsemane, if you would have been able to pray with me but one hour, you would have realized that I said, if let this cup pass from me. But if this cup can't pass from me, let your will be done. His will must be, I'm at peace with it. I prayed and I made peace with it. We're running around here reacting like Peter and Will because we're in the pursuit of happiness and we're not in the pursuit of peace. So in my closing, before we pray this evening, I wanted you to be able to recognize the contrast between happiness. Yeah, you're going to be happy when you acquire that vehicle that you worked so hard to get. And then you're going to be unhappy when it breaks. Yeah, you're going to be happy when you acquire that house or that apartment or that townhouse in that neighborhood that you so long worked and desired to be there until you start getting looks from the neighbors because they see you and they say, oh, there goes the neighborhood. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to happen to you. It might, it might have happened to me on an occasion. I can just go on and on and bore more of y'all patience. But so many of y'all want me to get done so you can get to the mass Singer. So let me say this. I implore you to pursue peace because peace is not as readily accessible and vulnerable to the wiles of Satan as this happiness that we continue to pursue and how it often, for so many of us, unfortunately today, because of circumstances, internal or external, often betrays us. It's nice to be happy, but it's better to not be at war. Amen. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this salient and this sagacious word that you have poured out on us this evening. Forgive us for not pursuing that peace. But surely we need it. Surely we need it. Surely we need it. And we believe that said forgiveness is nigh us because of the sacrifice of your son, the Hamashiach on the cross who died but didn't stay dead, rose again, and currently is sitting on your right hand, Heavenly Father, making intercession for each and every one of us that believe and that desires such and said intercession, of which this powerful message and lesson this evening was an example of said intercession, and we pray that you forgive our sins, remove them from us, and we know that this is nigh us because of grace. And we pray that you keep us or that we are saved, as Paul the Apostle wrote in his letter to the Ecclesia at Rome, chapter 10, verse 9. The original Greek transliteration for the word saved is sozos, which means that you preserve us or keep us until such a time that you return for us, that we might live with you in infinite time and forever. We ask these blessings and many more. Bring peace to your people in our hearts. And hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. We ask these blessings and many more in that great name, Yeshua, Yehoshua HaMashiach. In Christ's name we pray. Listen, we love you. It's not a whole lot you can do about it at all. We want to see you next week on April the 6th, the following week in person at 7 p.m. at the Swatera Church of God. Meet us. Bring your questions. 
uh, don't bring your questions necessarily about, you know, who is better, H&R Block or uh, the other tax place, because this is about faith. This is about spirit, spiritual things, religion, uh, judo, Judeo-Christianity, and I'm, I'm not an expert in anything else. Well, not in most things besides that, but we want to see you. Until then, please join us this Saturday, Saturday Sabbath, for another uh, powerful word online. And until then, have a blessed Wednesday evening. Peace. Shalom.